Mill Creek Falls Trail and the first thing that you'll notice here is the devastation left by the wildfires. The trail itself is only a 3.4 mile long trail. Pretty modest but it does have 767 feet of elevation gain. And it's all char. good news is that life does persist and vegetation is already starting to come back. Do you hear that beautiful babbling creek? That is Sulphur Creek and it's the first feature that you're going to get on this trail. But I must warn you, it smells a little funny. The Mill Creek Waterfall is at the converge of Bumpus and East Sulphur Creeks. It's a 75 foot tall waterfall that drops into a rainbow-esque pool of beautiful water. Now unfortunately you cannot get to the base of this waterfall, but do not let that stop you from doing this hike. waterfall is at the end of the hike so just be aware that most of the elevation gain that you're gonna do is once you're coming out of the gorge This trail is on the easy to moderate side, so plan to do about two hours while you're out here hiking it. So I'm on my way to stop number two. This one's called Sulphur Works. And I've got to tell you, it smells like rotting eggs. So the next trail that you're going to want to stop at is going to Bumpus Hell Trail. It's 2.6 miles out and back with over 400 feet of elevation gain. What's really 
cool about this trail is you get to hike right beside Lake Helen. We'll check that one out later. So if you ask me, Buff as Hell is pretty aptly named. It's over 16 acres of hissing, boiling, mud pots, fumaroles, and steam vents. It's named actually after an early explorer, Kendall Van Hook Bumpus, who accidentally discovered it by stepping in one of the vents and scalding his leg. It had to be amputated. So 10,000 years ago, there was a super volcano right behind these mountain peaks. It started to crumble and deteriorate around 10,000 years ago. Now there is a caldera that we can stand in. I'm only halfway to the end of the trail, but I'm already smelling rotting eggs. Behind me, there's just so many beautiful colors at work here. You have turquoise, green, orange, yellow, white. Makes for a beautiful scene. Love this trail. It's pretty easy and you want to plan on being on the trail for about an hour and a half. stunning and beautiful. The water's cold and you can see right to the bottom. We're gonna hike to the summit of Lassen Peak. Now this hike is five miles out and back, has over 1,900 feet of elevation gain, and the trail supposedly is not well defined at the top. Let's go check it out. So look at that. I had the sense that somebody was watching me. Look at this feature right up here. They call that the Vulcan's eye. And I see why, I feel like I'm being watched. These views are 
getting totally unreal out here. Just check it out. Done. Masterpiece. The last eruption was in 1914. It's a dome volcano, so more than likely I have nothing to worry about. But it used to be part of a larger volcano called Mount Tihama. So, Lassen Peak formed about 27,000 years ago. And in front of me, there is the leftovers, the remnants of when glaciers cut through the mountain. Check it out. And you can see how they just kind of slid down all the way. These switchbacks at the very end of the trail are brutal. So in the background is Mount Shasta. Look at that thing. It's about 14,000 feet. I think it's 14,179 feet above sea level. It's a 14er. And apparently it's an active volcano. Blanket of snow at the top. Ahead of me. Up there is the summit. This is the part of the trail where it disappears completely. You're kind of on your own to navigate to the peak. So 10,457 feet above sea level. The next trail that you're gonna to wanna to stop at is the King Creeks Trail, which leads to a waterfall. It's only 2.4 miles and has over 500 feet of elevation gain. Long way down from these overlooks, but the view is awesome. fun. This trail has my heart. This has been my favorite trail in the park so far.
Those stairs at the end of this trail are no joke. You've been warned. The next trail that you're gonna wanna check out is the Cold Boiling Lake Trail. This trailhead is located at the King's Picnic area, which is also a great place to have lunch. This trail is an easy one. It's only a mile and a half. It's an out and back trail with only 100 feet of elevation yet. So definitely getting to see some more charred remains from the Dixie fire but there's still a lot of vegetation around. So there looks like there's been a mountain lion sighting here recently, which is about right. I'm at lower elevation and they tend to hang out in the canyons and around the streams uh, down below. Now there's only been like 20 violent encounters with mountain lions in the past 20 years, three of which have been fatal. Still, those are small odds. I don't want to encounter one. wild at this lake. You can actually hear the bubbles coming up. super bummed there's not a lot of water here but I will tell you this has been the most solitude I've had the entire time I've been in the park
this is one of those trails that you want to take your time on. Volcano Mountain and all those stairs, the Manzanita Lake Trail is a very nice reprieve and it's gorgeous. You can look real from here. I'm on the cinder cone trail. Now this trail is typically five miles to the base. I think today I'm gonna to try to make it to the summit so we can get some awesome views. The cinder cone, for those of you who don't know, is a volcano. The cinder cone. Behind me here is actual lava. Now it's not hot anymore, it's cooled off, but these are lava beds formed by the cinder cone. Doesn't even look real. The 
let's see. We can go all the way around via that trail, or we can get close to the inside. I'm kind of curious. I would like to see it. I suppose I should be more worried about interrupting or burning my feet. <laughs> Looks like it's inevitable. I'm gonna fall. Interesting. I'm afraid to touch it. Oh, man, who made it out of the cinder cone? So now I want to check out these painted dunes. This must be another volcanic feature of the cinder cone, and it's right above this ridge right here. Mm -hmm. 